Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today, guys, I am bringing you a budget knife that may very well end up being my favorite budget knife of the year. I am pumped for this one. This one here is none other than the Kaiser T1. Now, this is not just any Kaiser T1. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are very familiar with the T1 design. It's been in the Kaiser lineup for years in the premium edition, but now they've taken a classic brought it down. I don't I don't even want to say down. Down sounds like a bad word for this, but they've moved it over and uh, made another version of it in the Vanguard series. And uh, this one here actually happens to be a Mojave Outdoor exclusive. So if you want to pick this knife up, you can only get it here. I will have it linked below. Use this code right here, Wayne's World, for 10% off. Get yourself a deal and get yourself uh, what I think is a damn good knife. And I'm going to tell you guys why right now. But first, before I get into all the specifics, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 7.5 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.25 inches and a blade width of 1.11 inches. Blade thickness on this guy is 120 thousandths with a 154 cm blade steel, a drop point style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.25 inches and a handle thickness coming in at 500 thousandths or uh, a half inch in a in another term, we have a handle width of 970 thousandths and a handle material of black micarta with a liner lock locking mechanism and a user of a right hand only tip up carry with a weight coming in at 3.31 ounces designed by, excuse me if I mispronounce this, but uh, Yuli Hiniki, Yuli Hiniki. I, that's my best attempt, and I'm sorry if I murdered it. Uh, and most impressively, a price coming in at a very reasonable $79 for this guy. So, uh, yeah, no issue with the price. Um, you guys probably know it's becoming somewhat of a standard 79-ish, 69-ish is kind of where a lot of the Kaiser Vanguard models are falling. Um, let's see where it falls in terms of size, because this is, again, this is another one. That's, it's a real nice size for me. Let's compare it with a couple that everyone's going to know and love. Uh, the Hogue Deca, as well as the Benchmade Bug Out. I think that right there really tells the whole story, to be honest. Um, very much in line with both of these. You definitely have a little more girth on the handle of this T1 here. Uh, not quite as thin. Um, obviously, with those new scales, that's a little heavier, but in terms of weight, a regular stock bug out and this DECA is going to be considerably lighter than this as well, but you guys know my take on weights. Uh, whether it's two ounces or four ounces, that doesn't really make a difference to me. Um, but overall length, very similar to these two. And then uh, got uh, just a couple more in case anyone needed to see something else. We have the Kaiser Gemini from the Vanguard series, which is another uh, another one of the goats, in my opinion. Very, very nice design there. And one you just saw recently, the Kubi KU901C. A uh, little more length on the handle of the 901C, but really not that much. It, it, it stacks up very well with both of these knives as well. Uh, so there you go. There's your size comparisons. Oh, now let's get into it. I, I'm really excited to talk about this one because it's a design that I truly do love, but I never had the original T1 because I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with that Kaiser swirl. That just rubbed me the wrong way. Um, could never do it. So another reason I'm so thrilled to have this one. It's got a nice uh, clean pivot, uh, that flat black or well, pretty flat black, not exactly totally flat, but nonetheless, the whole makeup of the this version is very attractive to me. Uh, starting with the blade. Now, this there's there's nothing special to this blade at all, really. It's a classic, gorgeous drop point blade with a pretty excellent edge coming in at eighteen thousandths right behind the edge. Um, a nice, relatively high flat grind. It's it's not the highest flat grind in the world, but it depends where you're at with the knife. If you're cutting up here, it's a full flat grind. If you're cutting down here, uh, you know there, it's it's not quite as high. But regardless, uh, pretty nice cutting geometry on this guy. And at the end of the day, it's a blade that's definitely going to hold up very well to any EDC task you throw at it. Uh, within reason, of course. You know, it's a it's it's a three and a quarter inch blade, so you know it's only limited to so much. But nonetheless, uh, it's a blade that's going to perform pretty well. For you, especially with that 154 cm steel that I think Kaiser does a really good job with. 
Um, you also have a very nice solid tip on this guy. Um, it's not dainty. It's not ridiculously thick. It's one that you could just do a lot of versatile work with and I think get a lot of really good use out of it. Um, lastly, on this blade here, you have perfectly placed and perfectly sized thumb studs. That I, I, I feel like I hear a little more complaints about thumb studs on certain knives. No real, no, nothing in particular comes to mind, but I hear about that more and more that, oh, these thumb studs could be a little better, this, that, the texture, something. Uh, these thumb studs are money. Uh, no issue with the thumb studs whatsoever. They're, they're nothing special. They're pretty basic, but uh, in the perfect, perfect spot on this blade. Going into the handle, um, ergos are very nice on this guy, very smooth. You know, you don't have a choil, you don't have anything super hand-hugging good, but it's just enough curve in the handle, nice thickness, smooth edges. You get the grip from the micarta. There's nothing saying what's going on. Why does this feel this way? It just feels good. Uh, you have a clip back here that I really like. Kind of reminds me of a bug out clip. We'll get it up here and compare it to the bug out. Um, basically almost identical in length. Maybe actually just a hair shorter. I, I would say it's pretty much the same length though as the bug out clip. Uh, as you can see, it, you, get, you get a little more clearance with this clip as well. Um, so aesthetics that, uh, that check all the boxes, uh, ergos that work, it's functional, it's good, it's not too big. This is an excellent clip on this knife. Another thing that I really like about this knife that I, I it, it shocks me to say, but I actually like this lanyard hole because it, it, it kind of adds a little touch of aesthetics to the knife. It's not just a, you know, a hole there. Um, it's molded and worked into the actual backspacer, so it looks really good. And also, that could I, I you know I may be wrong on this, but it could be you know it's a little hard point to where if you ever had to use it as a glass breaker, maybe you could. I may be wrong in saying that, but regardless, I mean it's metal, so you know it's gonna be it'd be a nice striking point if you ever had to do something like that. Um, and it did again. It just looks good at the end of the handle. It doesn't uh, it, it doesn't attract too much tension, and it's not an eyesore to me. So I like that a lot. Now, as for this micarta, it, it's, you know, you guys know by now, the Kaiser Vanguard series has some very nice micarta. Uh, this black is really nice, especially the more I hold it in my hand, it seems to patina up really quick. Um, it darkens up, but then as it dries, the, the, the dark spots go away, which I think is pretty cool. Um, you see a lot of the grain and the weave within the micarta, so that looks really nice. Um, there's just really nothing on this knife that really, or this handle that, uh, gives me any issues whatsoever. Um, another highlight of this handle is the liner lock access and the way it's hidden, kind of, I mean, th this black on black on black works very well. You have obviously really dark black, uh, you know, a, a, a black and white mixture with the micarta and the liner being coated black, it blends in really well. Um, it's almost like you don't even see it, but you know what's there. Excellent access, break the lock, and it easily shakes shut. Um, I, I'll say it again, I've said it before in the past, but liner lock access is extremely important to me. Um, that's something that I put a heavy emphasis on because it's something you use between the liner lock access and the pocket clip. Um, two things that you use just as much as the blade, if not more than the blade, because if one requires use of the other. So it's very important to me. Really do appreciate that easy access to the liner lock there. Now going into the action. Whew, yeah, it, it, it feels assisted. Once you break that detent, it's flying out. Um, now, I will say, I think the sample I got, I think it may have just a slightly stronger detent than the rest, uh, but it also works to the advantage uh, in some aspects. Now, some people may get this and say, oh, it's way too heavy of a detent for me. I honestly don't think this is going to be the case with all of them because I've seen a couple other guys, talk to a couple other guys that have this this model, this exact model, and their version has um, a, more, a more regular Kaiser detent. Um, they have no issue with it whatsoever. And I can actually tell just by the pressure, the look on their, their thumb when they're deploying it, 
um, that it's a little lighter and the kick isn't quite as hard. So the detents are probably going to vary a little, uh, regardless of how good Kaiser or any manufacturer is, there's always going to be a little, so there's going to be some difference in that, uh, detent strength from, uh, from sample to sample, um, as everybody gets theirs, but mine's a little on the stronger side, but like I said, I like it. It gives it that 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 extra thwack and force when the blade comes out and because the detent's so strong middle finger flicking it is kind of crazy because I'm not really flicking it most when I, most of the times when I middle finger flick a knife I get I get my nail behind it just enough to kind of kick it out now this one I can still do it but I got to push a little harder and you saw how fast that whipped out but what I'm doing with this is I'm kind of just putting my fat up against the back of it and just pushing it up and it just kicks out. Try and keep an eye on my middle finger as I push. You'll see that it's just a little push and it flies out. Yeah, to me, that's super addictive. Now it wears on the tip of my middle finger a little, but I think I love it. I, I, I love the feel and that action, so I'm okay with that. Um, this is one that even with that stronger detent, I can fidget with it good, enjoy that action, and it's not going to tear my fingers up too much. I'm obviously not complaining about it because I really enjoy it. Um, thumb deployment is obviously a little easier than middle finger deployment just because I think your thumb is a little naturally stronger than your middle finger. But regardless, I thoroughly enjoy deploying this blade with both thumb and middle finger. Um... That's really about it with this guy. I, I, I blew through this review and now I'm kind of sad because I, I was so happy to talk about it. We're going to keep talking about it though because the action is so good. The overall design, the outline of this guy, you guys know, it's no secret. I, I enjoy, I love simple designs. You know, Ray Laconico is my guy. That's one of my favorite designers. He brings that to the table. And uh, maybe I need to look a little more into this Yuli Hinicki. Again, I'm very sorry if I mispronounced that name. But uh, I am a huge fan of this design as well. So uh, I'll have to see uh, what what other works uh, this artist has out there to uh, to check out. But very very nice job from Kaiser. They didn't they didn't do anything too much. They took something great, and in my opinion, they made it a little better by cleaning up that pivot, throwing some good micarta on it, a decent a, a good budget steel, and a very good price of seventy nine dollars. So it's. It's just one, it's a home run if you like this design, if you like a, thumb a knife on thumb studs. You, this is really one you have to get, in my opinion. If you can afford it, it is a fantastic one. And just a very good, clean knife. Um, it's going to be very hard to beat this one this year. I'm going to be very honest. I'm, I am I am a huge fan of this. Um, the overall profile when opened or even when closed. It's just, it's just a really good looking knife. Simple, clean. Uh, it, it, it's what I look for in a knife and I really, really enjoy it. So let me know what you guys think about this. How excited are you to get one? I will say get one before they're gone because these are going to sell out quick. Um, I, all my talks with everybody, it sounds like it's a winner across the board. So it's going to go quick. Hop on down there, click that link, pick yourself one up and let me know what other, I think I've asked this question before, but I want, I want to hear it again. What other Kaiser model that is premium, that hasn't been in the Vanguard that you guys want made in the Vanguard series. Um, I'm very interested to hear that because I feel like any design that Kaiser brings in there is a winner, so I'm sure there can only be more. Uh, with all that being said, I ho really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, I'm very confident you'll enjoy this knife just as much as I do if you pick one up. It's a damn good one, the Kaiser T1. Guys, have a great weekend. Take kickback, take it easy, and I will see you on the next one. I'm out.